There's a new five-speed manual transaxle, the F5MBB, that is now available for the Lancer. It's very similar to the Eclipse five-speed. And in your student guide, you'll find a little bit more on this transaxle as well as a major specification chart. Overhaul procedures are straightforward on it. Fifth gear and the fifth reverse gear synchronizer assembly are located on the back of the main case. They require special tools for removal and installation. And also, the transaxle case bolts are not reusable. They must be replaced. But we're not going to spend any time on this transaxle right now, so let's move on and take a look at the new automatic transaxle. The 08 Lancer is available with a continuously variable transmission, or CVT. This transaxle is unlike any other Mitsubishi transaxle you've ever encountered. Let me explain how this works. This transmission gives the vehicle excellent fuel economy and a very easy drive because there's no shift shock. The transaxle combines a torque converter and a continuously variable gearing ratio mechanism to achieve spirited driving performance. A comfortable driving ratio is automatically and continuously selected between low and overdrive, ensuring a smooth drive without shift shock due to the accelerator pedal operation. There's no feeling of gear shifts in this transaxle like you would normally feel in a conventional automatic. Just a continuous application of power and torque. Now for sportier performance, an optional driver selected sport mode provides fixed gear ratios. And this provides a shift fill like a conventional automatic transaxle. The GTS models are equipped with paddle shift operation to further enhance the driving experience. So, to better understand the CVT, let me go over how this transmission operates. First, let's talk about the forward and reverse switching mechanism. A planetary gear unit is installed that's connected to two elements, a forward clutch and a reverse brake. The planetary unit is located between the input shaft and the primary pulley to change the output rotation direction from forward direction in D range to reverse direction in R range. In D range, the planetary carrier is still idle while the annulus gear turns clockwise and the sun gear turns clockwise as well. The reverse brake is released and the forward clutch is held. In R range, the planetary carrier is fixed while the annulus gear turns in the clockwise direction and the sun gear reverses direction and rotates counterclockwise. The reverse brake is held and the forward clutch is released. Now, that wasn't really hard to understand, but so far, all we've talked about is how we get the transaxle to go in either the forward or reverse direction. And notice I said only two ranges of operation, forward and reverse. I didn't say first, second, third, and so on. So. How do we change gear ratios? Well, this is how. Different gear ratios are produced by using a still belt and two large pulleys. Let me explain. Grooves in different widths on two pulleys allow us to change both the input and output pulley groove diameter. This results in the variable but changing ratios. The shift mechanism is composed of a primary pulley, pulley ratio linkage, stepper motor, ratio control valve, secondary valve, and secondary pulley. Now let me show you how the transmission shifts from low to high. Line pressure is applied to the ratio control valve and the secondary valve. The ratio control valve position closes off line pressure from acting on the primary pulley. Residual pressure keeps the primary pulley stationary. Line pressure also passes through the secondary valve to act on the secondary pulley. As vehicle speed and load increases, the stepper motor rod begins to extend and move the pulley ratio linkage. This action moves the ratio control spool valve and allows line pressure to act on the primary pulley. Now at the same time, line pressure is cut off by the secondary valve. Fluid in the secondary pulley is vented by the position of the secondary valve. And at this point, the gear ratio begins to change because the primary pulley diameter is changing and the secondary pulley diameter is also changing. As the primary pulley diameter decreases and the secondary pulley diameter increases, gear ratio changes from low to high.
When the TCM determines that the gear ratio is correct for the driving conditions, it stops the movement of the stepper motor. This in turn stops the movement of the ratio control valve and the secondary valve. Now, at that point, the still belt is clamped by the secondary pulley, which is held steady by line pressure. The still belt is also clamped by the primary pulley, whose diameter has decreased. Now, when the transmission gear ratio changes from high to low, the process happens in reverse. The stepper motor rod starts to retract back into the stepper motor. This in turn moves the ratio control valve in. This cuts off line pressure to the primary pulley. The ratio control valve also opens up a passage to allow fluid from the primary valve to vent. Now at the same time, line pressure is allowed to pass through the secondary valve. Line pressure is now applied to the secondary pulley. Gear ratio changes when the line pressure applied to the secondary valve decreases the diameter of the secondary pulley. Now at any point, when the TCM determines that the proper gear ratio has been reached for the particular driving condition, the stepper motor stops retracting and thus stops the movement of the ratio control valve. This stops the change of the gear ratio. The gear ratio reaches its maximum low ratio when the stepper motor has retracted to its limit. The primary pulley diameter has decreased all the way. The secondary pulley diameter has increased to its maximum. In the secondary pulley, spring pressure helps keep the pulley diameter increased. Okay, I know I've oversimplified this operation to make it easy for you to understand, but I think you can see that the gear ratio is constantly variable to match the driving conditions, hence the name Continuously Variable Transmission, or CVT. Now, there is no service requirement for the belt or the pulleys. As a matter of fact, if any malfunction occurs in the pulley section, a replacement of the whole transaxle is required. Okay, that wraps it up for the transaxle, so we'll next take a look at some of the other features in the Lancer.